Miss Margaret, tell us, tell us what made you join the services. It was just a desire of mine. A desire to serve? During the war, yes. Well, tell us what those first few days were like. Tell us what it was like to get started. Well, it was in the winter time and the snow was on the ground. Were you scared? In the barracks. In the barracks you were scared? Well, you have a but in, in the summertime, the mosquitoes were bad and so we had net netting put over the bunks, beds we slept in. And you were stationed in the Philippines. How much of a culture shock was that going from Vicksburg, Mississippi to the Philippines? Quite a shock. Tell us about some of your experiences. Well, I served in different parts of the Philippines, wherever I was needed. And we served uh, at night, and we served at, and during the day, too. Uh, it was a schedule very similar to night and day at home. You have a lot of treasures there. We do you want to tell us a few stories about some of the things that you have there? Like that flag is pretty amazing. That came out of the heap, the, the pile of heap stuff. And I picked it up and was allowed to keep it because MacArthur had said that he would return. And this was the cave that he returned to. And that's where the flag came from? And the flag came from that cave. Did you ever meet General MacArthur? Oh yes, we bumped together <laughs> in the doorway, mm -hmm. and he visited our college, our uh, <laughs> living quarters, and he we knew he was coming, and we the Filipino girls worked for us. And I, we, we had planted flowers all over around the barracks, and they had gotten cut down because they forgot to bring them that morning. And I sent them out to to get some, and so they got some. They got some of the ones that they had already planted before, and decorated inside in the day room in his headquarters. MacArthur didn't like the way I had dug a little trench around my tent, so he showed us how, showed me how, and then I d built one underground. A tent? A, 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 a place? A, a place to keep things. It would, it would keep drinks cold if you'd bury them in the dirt. We think of, of General MacArthur as being larger than life. Was he larger than life in person? Oh yeah, he was, you couldn't help but admire him because when he went down as far as Australia and said he, he would return and then he did return to the cave and then that's where we all would go and meet and it would, and it was quite a thrill to go through and view it. What is the average day of a whack like? Very interesting because we ate it in the mess hall or we sometimes did our own cooking around our tents. And here, here is your... Irving Berlin came to visit and play the mm -hmm. piano for us. Here's your mess hall ticket. What was the work like? Well, it, it, the, the telegraphing was much like it had been here in, in the States. If somebody was down out in the Pacific and we got word that they were out there, then we sent, sent messages and he would to rescue. And he was brought in to the hospital and treated and fed. I know you have a whole lot of stories. Do you have a particular favorite story you'd like to share with us? Well, we entertained ourselves in the day room. That's when we uh, got together and p put the book together, Wax and Wings. The yeah. summer was hot, very, very warm, and the winter was cold, and you 
the capital of the Philippines was up the mountain. And the, it was a Catholic school and they allowed us to spend the nights with them and stay with them. And uh, some of the boys had put some of the old jeeps together and you could buy them for so many cartons of cigarettes. And to get gas, all you had to do was drive up to the gas pump and fill her up and you were ready to ride. Now, did, didn't you get a ride from a Japanese in one of the jeeps? Yeah, across, and it was across the big river and it was scary. And I, I didn't want to cross, but I knew that was the only way I was going to have to get back home. And I, I said something to the driver, and he told me if I didn't hush, he was going to put me out and leave me. Well, so I sat down, and I was quiet, <laughs> if you can imagine. I can't imagine that. <laughs> Tell us about playing softball. Did did you start playing softball in the Philippines, or did you? No, I played played before we left the United States. I played before I even joined the service. I played softball down at the YMCA. Mm -hmm. You played several sports, didn't you, Miss Margaret? Yeah, tennis and bowling. Mm -hmm. Bowling was one of my big sports. Mm -hmm. She's also in the Bowling Hall of Fame, which is located in Natchez, Mississippi. Oh, that's mm -hmm. really cool. I can't even break a hundred. Miss <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Margaret, I have a really serious question for you. You've been all around the world, and you've been honored all over the world. And we really appreciate your service. And I know that going from Vicksburg to all of these places was exciting, but why did you come back home to Vicksburg? Well, <laughs> most people return home <laughs> to some place, so I returned home. My mother and father and, and sister all lived here. So it was just a natural reaction to return to Vicksburg. I figure after seeing the world in the way that you've seen the world that Vicksburg may have been small to you when you came home. Or was that, was that refreshing to turn home, re return home to Vicksburg where everything was normal? Well, they had put out a system of you had to have so many points to return, to, to be dismissed from the service. And I, I had enough points to come back to Vicksburg. I didn't want to stay any longer than I had stayed. This was our, the book we put out, like a school annual. This is kind of all our pictures and things where we went and did. Irvin Berlin came and visited. Now, Bing Crosby came, didn't he? Bing Crosby also came and visited. Mm -hmm. And it was a good shopping area. I have a room full of items that I picked up. Now, didn't you buy, didn't you say you bought a Jeep while you were over there? Oh, yeah. They, the boys would collect old Jeeps that had been on the battlefield. And then they would sell them. It, it didn't cost very much. And to get gasoline, all you had to do was drive up to the gasoline pumps that were scattered around the country and fill her up. You were saying that you could buy a Jeep for cigarettes. Yeah. How many cartons of cigarettes did it take to buy a Jeep? Oh, anything where from five to ten packages. And we worked my, night and day and an officer woke me up one morning because she wanted a jeep and she wanted to know if I could get her a jeep and I told her yeah with so many packs of cigarettes so she got all that together and I got her the jeep. 
it was a very busy, busy place. And they sold stuff right on the street. And people bought food right on the street from the people who had cooked it, the Filipinos. What were the people like, Miss Margaret? They were interesting folks. And they had built a, a, a iron church that n nothing could destroy. A bomb couldn't destroy it. it it was built to stay and remain, and it did. It was a beautiful iron church. All right, Amanda, you know a bunch of the stories. What are your, some of your favorite stories that you've heard that you'd like for Miss Margaret to share with everybody? Well, one of the main ones she's already talked about was with the flag. She she talks about it a lot. Uh, she she talks about the cave. She she really loved uh, General MacArthur. And she did say she she used to run into him. She almost knocked him down one time coming out of the barracks. Um, the softball she she played softball. She has plenty of pictures and stuff that um, she'd like to show to you later. Uh, she did pl uh, she pitched, and she also played shortstop sometimes. Uh, she was a very good athlete. Um, the book that she has. Uh, she's described to me a lot of the stories that are in it that she actually experienced and some that just other of other people of the WAC had experienced and it has all of the pictures of everyone that was over there and that all worked on the book. It's, uh, they're all in the book. Um, she she talked about the hall, the mess hall a lot and how she had already told you that that's where they went to eat. But she she really, really enjoyed going to New Guinea and the Philippines. And she did send a lot of uh, stuff home to her mother and to her sister. Miss Margaret, I know that, that wartime was was scary and was traumatic but it seems like that you took away some really great experiences from it and now in 2011 would you would you recommend people to serve based on your experiences that if they had an opportunity yes if they had an opportunity to serve would you recommend for young women to, to continue to serve yes I would we are Very hardly, and if you told them a few stories, they usually were eager to join. Now, I know it's different now than how it was when you were in the WAC. Now, y'all did not carry weapons, did you? We did not. You, yeah. They were not issued to any female. Okay, and you know now, now the women are actually on the front line to where they can carry weapons. Do you wish that you could have had a weapon back then? I don't think I ever really thought very much about it. You didn't really need a weapon, did you? No, because work, we worked morning and noon and night, and I worked night a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we had a coffee break, and they went out to the mess hall to get it, and I always went with a, uh, in the Jeep with a um, Japanese, and that was my method of transportation. Before you saved up enough to buy your Jeep, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is actually her certificate from when she joined the WAC. And I'll be glad to read it for you. It says, from the Army of the United States with the Women's Army Corps, Margaret S. Moore, having met preliminary requirements for enlistment in the Army of the United States Women's Army Corps, and having expressed in willingness to hold herself in readiness in the event her services are needed, is hereby declared eligible 
for such service subject to verification and approval of physical condition and personal history data. And this was dated November 15th in 1943. Miss Margaret, did you get to keep in touch with a lot of the ladies that you served with? Oh yes, we still <laughs> correspond, especially at Christmas time. And if any of us are close enough, we'd visit. Like a lot of them lived out in California. Mm -hmm. And the big thing was to go under that tr great big tree that grows out there on the highway. And I have pictures of that. Now, Miss Margaret, here are some of your friends. Here, could you tell me who these people were? These are, were from Vicksburg, was Catherine Gill. And then that's me. And that's Frances Ray who was from Atlanta, Georgia. And I could find her in the Philippines, but I never could find her in Atlanta. So that was one that you lost contact with? Yes. Have you been back? No, I've not been back. Would you like to go back? I'm not real sure I'd care about going back again. I've seen it now. And have a collection of things that I picked up from over there. And have many friends that I made. Well, in the service. Miss Margaret, we, we thank you so much for volunteering to serve and for being a woman volunteering to serve. Because even today, parents and family try to discourage their girls from doing things like this. And as a woman, is there anything you'd like to say to any, any girls or any women who may be watching this? It's quite an experience. And it was one that I was very eager to participate in. Well, thank you so much again, Miss Margaret, for sitting down with us. It's a pleasure. It's I'm very talkative about it. I'm oh, you can talk for days, and we will definitely listen. <laughs>